right? All is temporary matter inside and material matter. And there is temporary and material matter. Okay. So there, are, there is a difference. Temporary matter inside and material matter is irreversible. Okay. okay. And temporary and material matter is reversible. Means like what what you do in temporary? After quenching, we can heat and then cool, right? So in the heating process. So there is a temp certain temperature range. In the temperature range, what will happen? There will be change in the impact strength. Okay. So like this change will be also. You can see this. This is a very temperature range. Okay. So from 260 degree Celsius to 600 degree Fahrenheit, you can see there is a change in the impact strength. Now, okay. You can see that will be. So this. It will increase like this now. Clear? But there is a change like this. Okay? So this is this now decrease and then increase and decrease and again then increase. So this change in impact strength actually makes the material brittle. Clear? So that's why it is called unbrittle. Okay? Temperature unbrittle. Okay? So this happens in like Maximum like uh, all the steels, okay. Maximum steels like carbon steels, alloy steels, almost everywhere it is there. So how do like uh, differentiate? So basically like the temperature range actually comes in this range. Okay. So out of the uh, TME, okay, we have TME and TE. Temperature matter side and middle element and temperature and middle element. This is actually more prominent. Okay. Because it is reversible, right? Clear? Yeah? And while heating, it will be there. Again, if you cool it, it will be there. Okay. That's why it is actually need to be carefully actually controlled, right? But this process, once you heat, you will get into some some certain certain temperature range. You will get temperature and matter inside and material element. But again, if you heat again to a higher temperature range, this will disappear. Clear? Yeah? Again, after Cooling will not get this. Okay, so that's why these two are important. So let's see this in detail. So remember this temperature range. Okay, it is important. So it is a get question. Okay, huh? temperature range. What is the temperature range? So remember, 450 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. Okay, yeah. So first we will see the temperature matter inside and material matter. Okay, so basically. Now this uh, develops in this temperature range, 260 degrees Celsius to 370 degrees Celsius. Okay, yeah? so that's why it is sometimes called 350 degrees Celsius ambient. Okay, clear? Yeah? Or high 100 degree Fahrenheit ambient. Uh, the name in short it is called 350 degrees Celsius ambient. Okay, clear? Yeah? And it is also called one step ambient element because it is irreversible. Okay? While heating, it will be there because Here we saw. So from in here you can see like from 260 degrees Celsius to in this range, na. So while heating there is a sudden decrease in the impact strength. So this amplitude element will be there. Clear? But after it heating to a higher temperature, 400 degrees Celsius, 500 degrees Celsius, what will happen? This tendency of amplitude element okay will decrease. Clear? And so it will disappear. Means it will go like this only. Okay? Rather than Like this, it will go. Like this. Okay. That's so why it is. And after that, after that, if you again cool it, okay. While cooling, it will come again to this temperature range. But this will be not there. Okay. Clear. Yeah. That's why it is called irreversible and brittle. Clear. Yeah. So again, after after you come to the room temperature, again you heat it. You will not get again the brittle. Clear. Yeah. That's why it is called irreversible. Okay. Clear. Yeah. So, so that it is also called irreversible embrittlement because the steel which is embrittled by tempering in this range, temperature range. Okay, if you heat further to above 400 degrees Celsius, it will actually disappear. Means all that like the material will become tough. Okay, ah, the toughness will be regained. Okay, clear? And Generally, actually, if you again like cool it in this range, if you cool to the, to, in this range, there will be no embrittlement. Okay, means 
there is no change in like sudden transition of effect strand, right? Yeah. So that's why it is called so irreversible embedding. Okay. Clear? Yeah. So almost all the plane carbon strips, okay? They actually prone to this EME, huh? Irreversible embedding. Okay? Because when you actually start embedding in this temperature range, it will be there. But if you go to high temperature range, it is actually easily avoidable, right? And after it is advisable that to do the pre-treatment as a tempering to high temperature, don't be in the low temperature range. So because in low temperature range, what happens? Why this is happening? In low temperature range, we have seen that there is formation of insulin carbide, na? Again, clear? So insulin carbide is forming. Insulin carbide forms, okay, here. Yeah. And later on, as the temperature increases, what happens? It changes to cemented, right? Nah? Okay, here. Nah? Yeah. With this insulin carbide, later on actually changes to cemented, okay. And if this cemented actually segregates along the grain boundaries, then it will form intergranular fractures, okay. That's why the strength decreases, here. Yeah. So, you can see this. This point actually, the embrittlement is associated with the change in the structure of carbide, okay, huh? from epsilon carbide to cemented, right? How would Kessar as I go? It will actually be cemented, will form not in no, points like this, okay, it will form a pill, a very small pill will be formed, thin film, okay, huh? and this thin film will actually act as a no stress razor or crack propagating pathway actually, okay, clear? Yeah. Right, so that's why this is like, because this is very brittle nature, right? This so whatever, this is this carbide, this carbide is highly brittle, right? Nah? Yeah. And if it is very thin and also sharp, so along the grain boundary, it will be forming. Then what will happen with the application of stress, clear? Yeah. So this carbide will actually start actually forming cracks, okay? And this crack will actually propagate along the grain boundaries and it will form intergranular fracture, okay? IG, huh? The fracture mode will be intergranular fracture, so that will be treated. Okay, yeah. So that's why what is done? If you this know the change in this carbide, okay? The structure of carbide from insulin carbide to cement made, you can actually avoid by Doing a high temperature demo. Suddenly, right? Huh? If you do a high temperature demo, what will happen? The cemented films will be not formed. Okay? Carbide films will be not formed in the grain bond. Rather, this carbide films will be spherodized, you know? Along the grain bond. So, in that way, you can control the temperature. Okay? Here, yeah? that is one way. So on tempering at high temperatures, what will happen? This film disappears, you know? It will form globules basically. Okay. So in that way, you can avoid this in temperature range, this 260 degree to 370 degree range, you can easily avoid the embrittlement, okay? Um, tempered potential embrittlement. So there is actually, there are specific, it is not that no, these elements, okay. Why you can see this? Why it is forming film? This film actually along the grain boundaries is because of the presence of some elements like phosphorus, antimony, tin, arsenic, nitrogen. Okay? If these elements are present in steel, then actually they will tend to form this films, okay, carbide films along the grain boundaries. Okay? That's why it is advised that to whatever it is, phosphorus is there or antimony is there or tin is there, it should be as minimum as possible. Okay? Now, if only 0.01% of these elements are if available, then they can also promote embedding. Okay? So what is done? You should avoid these elements. Okay, here. Yeah? Because what is why, why it is they are low melting point elements? Okay. So this low melting point elements what will happen? They will liquefy, okay. That is there is a term called liquid embrittlement. You will read in your uh, mechanical metallurgy or somewhere. Liquid embrittlement. Liquid means they will liquefy, okay? These elements mix with the, the alloy elements. Here, 
these elements will mix with the other elements and will liquefy along the grain boundaries. So if it is liquefied along the grain boundaries, it will actually make the material brittle, separate actually, okay, gradually, right, at high temperature. Because embrittlement here, remember embrittlement occurs at high temperature. It is like creep, okay, creep occurs at high temperature. Similarly, your embrittlement also occurs at high temperature. High temperature below Martin side formation temperature or above? Above. This, this temperature range like corona. Okay. So this is a temperature range. Okay. Similarly, you can have a, this is TME. Okay. For TME, this is a temperature range. Okay. Here. For, for PE, it is 450 to 600 degrees Celsius. Okay. Which is very high. Sorry, I could not get it. 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 So, you have to get it. Sorry, I could not get it. मार्टिन साइड मैट्रिक्स में वहाँ एक्सप्लोर कार्बन रहता है। तो मार्टिन साइड तो नहीं रहेगा ना तब अगर मार्टिन साइड स्टार्ट करें जैसे ऊपर हम ले जाएंगे उसको हिट करेंगे तो वो पार्ट नहीं रहेगा वहाँ पे। You see the you are going somewhere somewhere else okay you see this okay let's see this okay you see this okay हाँ First, what happens here? Because of carbon segregation, there will be epsilon carbide formation okay, in this temperature. Okay, this is stage 1 now. Nah, here, and further, these carbides will be actually precipitated. Okay, okay, rod set here as the temperature increases. And further, what will happen? This actually, this whatever martin side is formed, this is actually decomposing and forming this. Nah. Have you here? Whatever mutton side is already formed after the quenching, it is actually what you are doing heating, tempering. So, this is decomposing and forming these carbides. Here, yeah? so slowly, slowly, these carbides becoming actually sterilized. Here, yeah? and ferret matrix is formed. Okay. Mutton side is decomposing. Yeah, mutton side is decomposing. Obviously, you are, you are doing quenching now. Quenching means faster to form mutton side. So, as mutton side is actually very hard. We cannot be used, that's why it is tempered. So during tempering, you get this kind of micro surface. Okay, clear? So this micro, during this evolution of this micro surface, there is possibility of embrittlement again. Okay? Because of the sudden transition in the impact strength. Clear? So that could be actually possibility that the material will fail. Clear? So why they are actually forming? Because of some atom elements like phosphorus, antimony. In okay, arsenic, nitrogen. If they are available in more quantity, they may form this. Okay, here. Yeah. So these carbides can be controlled. Okay, whatever the you can see here, it is epsilon carbide. Then lots of carbide precipitates, right? Then it is ferrodized, cemented forming, right? Gradually. Then further you can see this portioning of cement. In here, toughness is actually what increasing. Now hardness is decreasing. Clear? Okay. But in, what happens if this kind of elements are available? What will happen? This decrease in hardness okay, will be actually not a constant trend. Okay. There will be some fluctuation will be there. Similarly, the strength will be also, impact strength will be fluctuation. Means toughness will be, there will be fluctuation. Ah, actually, this, this, this will promote. This promotes the carbide formation. Okay. Here. So that's why you need to control this composition. Okay? This composition needs to be controlled. Only, as I said, no, only 0.01% of these elements are sufficient to do actually temperature. Okay. So you need to be very careful in actually seeing these elements. Okay, here. Yeah. So whatever That's why you know you need to control these elements, okay? Now, if they are not present, it is good, okay? Well and good. 
If they are there, then they should be very, very less. And also, you can add silicon, okay? Huh? Sufficient silicon. Okay? So, if you add silicon, what will happen? Silicon is a carbon, no? Affinity is there more no? for silicon, right? Okay? So, the silicon will inhibit the formation of cement, right? No? Because silicon will take the carbon. So, cement will be, cement formation will be inhibited, right? So, in that way, the carbon films will be not formed. Okay? You go outside. Adhya sir. And uh, Abhinav, right? Or Alua. Can I know? Alua, outside. Yeah, Alua, yeah. outside. Bola na? Come to go outside, outside. Please, go outside. Then 15 minutes go ya, which will run. Yeah? But the now stuffiness will be actually affected. Yeah? 
and there will be an ice in ductile lubricant constant temperature. Ductile lubricant constant temperature, as I said, okay, this one. So initially it was this one. Initially it was this before embryo development, right? Clear? Okay. After embryo development, this is actually increased, na? Right? Here come the temperature, right? Here okay. now it is increased, right? Okay. So if initially when it was here, you can see this. You can you can actually use this steel in this temperature range, right? na? Freely you can use without any problem. Here. Without any problem, you can easily use this still. But once this constant temperature actually moved to this point, then there is a restriction. Na? Only you can use the still in this temperature range. You cannot come in this range. Okay? Here, because in this range the material now is now brittle. Very clear. Okay? Now the material is brittle. Here. Okay. So this increase in so once the toughness is decreased, na. You can see this. The notch toughness is initially it was this. Nah. Now it is decreased this. Okay. Clear. And that too also the transient temperature, ductile to brittle transient temperature increased. Clear. So in that way what happens? What happens? There is a restriction of the steel. Okay. Okay. Clear. In service. Okay. So. There will be like sudden decrease in the like the toughness will be lost, okay? And there will be rise in the after the brittle transient temperature with an intradermal fracture, okay? There will be fracture, brittle fracture, okay? Huh? And below the transient temperature along the original austerity crank mountains, okay? So whatever the crank mountains will be there, along the crank mountains there will be brittle fracture, brittle fracture. okay? Clear? So this is called temper and brittle. Clear? So carbon steels in general. Having less than 0.5 percent manganese, do not show temper and brittle. If more than that, temper and brittle will be there. Okay. And alloy steels of high purity will not show temper and brittle. Okay. Temper and brittle. Like if you have antimony, phosphorus, and you have tin, arsenic. Okay. As low as 0.01 percent. Like in presence of nickel, manganese, chromium, silicon, and steels, there will be more than 0.5 percent. So what will they form? They will form. Oh, there is a process called co-segregation. Co-segregation of these elements will occur. So this nickel will co-segregate with phosphorus, or nickel will co-segregate with antimony. Okay, or it will co-segregate with tin. Okay, or it will co-segregate with arsenic. Yes, it will stay along the grain mountains. Okay, and generally this whatever segregation occurs is a low melting point. This will form a Low melting point material or okay, phase. This low melting point phase actually at that high temperature easily melt and along the grain mountains are packed and easily propagate. Here, yeah. so there is a, the temper and brittle melt is best explained with the concept of co segregation. Okay, the impurity solutes are the surface active elements in iron. Okay, whatever impurity elements like these of and these of these are all impurity elements. Okay, tin, arsenic. Uh, Antimony, phosphorus, nitrogen is all impurity. Okay, so these impurity elements actually they are highly surface active, which they can easily grow, or they can easily go and along the grain boundaries. Okay, and they reduce the grain boundary energy. Here, yeah. right? So when they reduce the grain boundary energy, it will reduce the cohesion. Na, the bonding break will occur. Here, yeah. there will be decohesion. Here, yeah. so once once the cohesion is reduced or bonding is broken. Easily the materials, the grain boundary along the grain boundary, the crack will propagate and failure will be there. Clear? Yeah. So these elements like antimony, phosphorus, arsenic, in interact with certain elements like nickel and manganese and forms this co-segregation effect. Okay, clear? Yeah. So uh, what they do? They form this kind of elements. Okay. The co-segregation of other elements form nickel antimony phase. Okay. Nickel, phosphorus, and nickel tin phase, okay, and manganese antimony phase, clear? Yeah. And then go and sit on the grain mountains, clear? Yeah. Right? And they are generally less melting point is less, low melting point phases. So at high temperature, high temperature, they will easily melt away. 
clear? And the help, help will be easily like uh, that, right? So the reason of co-segregation is the stronger the interaction between them, uh, between them than between either of these iron. Like if if these elements, okay, if this nickel is good with iron, okay, if the cohesion between nickel and iron is good, then there will be no hybridity. So what happens here? The cohesion of iron and nickel is broken by the presence of this antimony or arsenic or tin or phosphorus. Clear? So that's why the problem is there. So because the lattice is our, our iron lattice, nah? this is lattice, right? Okay, or FCC lattice. The high temperature it will be FCC lattice. Okay, clear? So this like if you have molybdenum, okay, if you have elements like molybdenum, titanium, okay, zirconium, if they are available, they will inhibit because they will actually have capacity to take over this element. Okay. Here yeah? they will not form any kind of no, cohesion. So reducing the cohesion of elements. Okay. So molybdenum, titanium, zirconium, they generally actually take care of these elements. Okay, phosphorus uh, or Antimony or uh, tin or bismuth, okay, whatever, right? So, if these elements can be easily actually, so if larger amount of molybdenum, antimony, zircon are present, then these elements slowly react with carbon to form stable carbides, releasing impurity atoms to segregate with the boundaries. Okay? So, in that way, they will actually happen. So, if you add more amount of molybdenum, there will be more effect will be there. Okay? So, in that way, you can control this. Clear? Similarly, there are Additional segregation may take place, okay? Along elements and present cycle like nickel and chromium, both are there. They can actually additional segregation will occur. And at high temperatures, thermal vibrations may the equilibrium segregation low enough not to cause entitlement. And at lower temperatures, the diffusion of elements is too low to cause enough co segregation with the normal temperature. So here is elements over there, okay? Nickel and chromium at high temperature. Then this segregation will be actually not affected, right? Because the thermal vibrations at high temperature will be actually will be reducing the segregation effect. Okay, huh? at high temperature, these elements have good cohesion. Okay, here the good cohesion is higher than elements, so the segregation will be reduced at high temperature. So in that way, embrittlement will be reduced. Similarly, at low temperature, the diffusion of this Whatever segregated elements will be actually sluggish. Now, the low temperature diffusion will be diffusion of these elements will be inhibited. Now, it will be actually restricted. That's why low temperature also you can actually control. Right? Just addition, like with the addition of segregation effect, you can see that at high temperature the segregation effect is actually restricted by using this element, nickel and chromium. Okay, and at low temperature, these elements will not have to diffuse. Okay, that's why there will be no segregation. Okay, clear? Along the grain boundaries. So, if you have segregation along the grain boundaries, no ambiguity. Clear? So, in that way also you can control. Okay, clear? So, as I said, no, like, if you want to control the ambiguity, you have to see the impurities. Okay, the composition of these impurities should be as low as possible. Clear? So generally they are in, uh, generally you will not find this okay. If you find, it will be in TPM level, okay. Huh? Very, very low. Or you add alloy steels like molybdenum, okay. Molybdenum, titanium, zirconium, if you add, then this segregation effect will be not there. Okay, clear? Or you quench from tempering at high temperature. So now, quench can I work? High temperature by tempering. Clear? You go to high temperature tempering. You will not see this kind of behavior. Okay, clear? So these are some methods to control the embrittlement of temper embrittlement. Okay, so this is one kind of you know, defects, temper embrittlement. There are also other defects. Okay? Like other defects like crack, distortion, wrapping. Okay, so crack, how the crack will be forming? When you have internal tensile stress, okay. Now, when the internal stress tensile stress exceeds the resistance of the steel to separation, the crack occurs, okay, right? So if you have 
suddenly the residue quench it. Okay, suddenly it quench it. If there are a lot of tensile residual stresses, okay, where but residual stresses can be okay, residual stresses can be tensile in nature and compressive in nature. Okay. Okay, clear. So if it tensile residual stresses are there, then crack propagation is actually. Promoted, okay, clear. If compressive residual stresses are there, okay, crack propagation will be restricted. Okay, clear. So, how this tensile residual stresses will be propagated? You need just a simple surface crack, micro crack. Clear. Because there are already inbuilt stresses, na? There are already inbuilt stresses. So, inside a metal, if there is a small micro crack, then the stress can actually increase the Pathway actually, okay, right? For crack propagation. Since the propagation, crack propagation may easily have a What if compressive stress is there, then this will be not there. Okay. 